mate. Um, I'm not sure else. I don't have a presentation. I'm just going to spin a yarn. Uh, New Zealand is a country of 4.5 million people, 270,000 square kilometres of land, $180,000 billion of GDP, of which the material portion is focused around a couple of industries. It's geographically isolated from major markets around the world. In reality, we, are only, we only have so much land that we can harvest and grow our economy. As New Zealanders, isolation has taught us to do things with less, with less and solve problems. Being creative and solving problems is in our DNA as New Zealanders and as Kiwis. And me as a, um, like Debbie, a Kiwi that was born here, proud of our heritage, um, we are brought up that way. And that's why overseas companies chase New Zealanders a lot and take them overseas and take some of our top talent abroad. We recognise our own small market, sorry, we, re we recognise our own small markets have been, we must look to the distant markets to grow as a company, as a country and as an economy. Hence, New Zealand Inc. going global is critical to the long term success of New Zealand. New Zealand is renowned globally in many markets and many areas, specifically dairy and farming, but is building a reputation for developing unique, innovative solutions in many industries. And I'll just use a couple of little examples like um, Glide Park, so Ken Stevens, and the technology, even though you think it's just a mover of um, luggage, the technology underneath that is global and it's driven globally. Or a little company called Serato Software. Um, two young boys, DJ Software and out of Auckland, and now today they control 75% of the global market in the DJ software market itself. So it shows that we have severe intelligence in this country. And I use an alternative example. Sweden is famous for its kit set furniture. New Zealand needs to be famous for its IP and its smarts. We can only produce so much. We need to grow our economy by selling our intellect. By way of example, um, I take a quote from the Indian Prime Minister and he was sitting with John Key and he asked um, John Key, why do you want an FTA with New Zealand? And the comment was, well it came the other way, sorry. The comment about having an FTA, he said, well, India has one million farms with one cow. And New Zealand has some very sophisticated farming technologies, techniques, and India wants to learn how to be self-sufficient. So it just epitomises the fact that we have a lot of smarts and a lot of technology and the economy is focused on selling milk products and the like. Um, there's markets out there that are looking for our smarts and then there's a good example and China's another good example um, of that. And in reality, licensing our intellect to the world is the key to our success. Our experiences in our intellect and our IP that we've developed. I'll use another example in China, in the outbacks of China. Um, a New Zealand company out of the White Cattle, um, one of the EV tribes there, they set up a horse stud farm. And what are they licensed into that horse stud farm? It's all about the ITM processes around how they breed high-end racing stock. Now, that's a smart that we see into the world. I use another example, NAVMAN and PMAN, and the technology around the world for some of this, this um, software, or Fitech, not many people might know about Fitech, a licensed headphone manufacturer in New Zealand, noise cancelling software, a sense of the world, and it's a smart sort of New Zealand developers to take that to the world and license it to some of the major manufacturers of headphones in, uh, around um, the globe. MCOM, banking apps, which are white labeled to US banks, it's the smart that was developed here, piece software. So they're just examples of our intellect and sending it to the world. Um, and ironically, yesterday I was at an event with um, the High Commissioner Ravi Patta, and he even said that he sees India wanting to chase technologies out of New Zealand. He sees that as more important than some of the um, primary products. So coming to the next step through is taking NZ into the world and aid through Asia. Asia is growing as an economic powerhouse to the rest of the world, specifically as a China and India. And obviously this poses an enormous opportunity for New Zealand and New Zealand. Aid. And clearly Asia is a market in itself and that region. However, today I'm going to sort of touch on a couple of areas where Asia is a leapfrog to global markets for massive growth for New Zealand companies. We're small, but we can be large and we can have a global footprint. We just need to do things differently. Can't just sell direct. We don't have a billion people around the world selling products today. There's an insatiable demand from A 
education companies for innovation to help them service their own massive markets and grow globally. And New Zealand, and it is New Zealand's gateway to the world. We've been I did we used to have say that the US and Europe were our key markets, but well, today it's Asia. And I take a new point there about um, definitive of which what Asia is. There's a very broad, too often we talk about China and India. We don't talk about places which are just as big and effective as Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in those companies. And Asia has a population slice and a global spread for us to be um, successful around the world. Now, I'm going to drop onto three key points and then leave it at that because I want to keep it short. In terms of learnings of going global for New Zealand companies, the first one is live, learn, breathe, eat, live, 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 and assimilate Asia and emulate. Now, my, the point about that is too often New Zealand companies, as you said, go and say, oh, we'll do two trips or three trips and we'll learn something. Well, wrong answer. You've got to live the market. You've got to understand the market. You've got to understand how they do business. The problem with a lot of New Zealand companies is they think we can do business the same way we do in New Zealand. Well, it's not right. The way business is done in um, India versus the way business is done in Singapore um, versus in Thailand are completely different. And if we're using those markets as our lead frogs into other more foreign markets, you need to know the other market piece of your product. So it's about doing it well and understanding how they work. It's not what they are doing as well. But the issue is that it is well documented is our disability that we don't actually understand markets well and we don't like to learn and we don't take the effort, time and energy to learn. I met a lady yesterday um, at a Christchurch, a little company that does the design work for a truckload of the airports through China and, and sorry, sorry, India and China actually, but more so India. And the reality is that she's up in India six times a year. That's what you have to do. You've got to know the market and it's related to it and understand it. The next point, grow off the shoulders of giants. Now, um, I've seen this done, I've done this with a number of companies where we're a small company, we're a small company, we're a small country. However, partnering with people and licensing our technology um, to companies that are global, and I use, I'll use a specific example here, a company called Emphasis in India. Emphasis has 135,000 staff globally, has 95 offices in the US and is a global footprint. Uh, based out of uh, Mumbai. Now, Emphasis does deals with New Zealand companies. It's actually got operations here. It takes New Zealand software companies and takes their technology because it says it's world leading and it pushes it out to the world. We don't need to have the foot shop, the foot soldiers. They've got them for us and they utilize their power to deliver wealth to New Zealand. So, in reality, and to put it in comparison, Ontario has 29,000 staff globally. We've just got sales engines. So, growing our business with the shores of giants is a key way for New Zealand people to win. And I use one example here, I use another example um, of a mobile wallet company in Auckland. It's got eight staff, eight, oh, eight, 10 staff. And that company has signed a deal with a, another company in India, actually, out of head office out of Hamburg as well, um, is Airtel. Now Airtel is about to take this little company into 35 countries throughout Africa. So we've got an Asian company taking a New Zealand company to the world. It's got its footprint and it's a multi-billion dollar company. Um, there's another data analytics company that's done a similar sort of thing out of a company out of Singapore. Um, I've seen another company where they've done licensing and joint venture and partnership agreements with a company called uh, Accenture. Now Accenture, uh, a multi-billion dollar global footprint, and they're going to take this little New Zealand company, again, throughout the African markets. And we're talking um, markets which are 100 times bigger than, than we've even imagined. And it's about being focused on them, but using other people, so the shoulders are joined. And the third point I say is, you have to give to get. <coughs> And as a Kiwi, I've seen it, I've experienced it, and say both sides of the coin. You live brought up in a European society with an Asian bent on an Indian in my case, and you see how we do business and you learn the best of both of us. But when you go up to Asia, a thousand dollars, if you're selling a product in the US for a thousand dollars, you go into Asia, well expect to sell for a hundred. And the problem is a lot of Kiwis can't get their heads around that. 
I've got the, the other side of that is there's, there's a billion more people that you can sell a hundred units to. But more importantly, those giants that you deal with, they'll go and sell it into the bigger markets, into the US markets, four thousand dollars. Give up a little bit and you've made a lot more. And I say to a lot of entrepreneurs and companies, do you want to be a big part of a small thing or a small part of a big thing? We need to learn to let go, and that's one of the learnings I say to you from New Zealanders. We need to learn to let go of we have to control things and give things away. We have one tech resource in this country, and that is the people in the room, the Asian community, um, first, second, to fifth generation. They all have tech contacts back to their homelands, and those are all opportunities for New Zealand thing to go globally. And I say, come back to live, live, breathe, eat, and learn, they market. We're off the shoulders of these giants that are over there because we can, and you have to go to get. Thank you.